Driver comfort, man. What 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 do I get inside of the truck? Ah, uh, you get a steering wheel, two seats, and a the bunk, double bunk. Damn it, man! That's what you get. <laughs> That's what you get. Here's the thing. I, I trucks. I trucks. The, the fact that you come home every single week. <laughs> you ask, no telling. You come home every week, right? So it's. All you have to do is What's up guys, Lockout Men here in the truck, back again with another video for you. Welcome back to Lockout Men Makes the Call, where I make the call for you guys to get the information that you want to know about these trucking companies when you, yes you, you right there, when you come into the trucking industry. Yes, yes, yes. Today's call was a subscriber call as always. They wanted me to call Epps. Great call. I called Epps today, got him on the phone, and we chopped it up. I mean, it was a good ass call. If it's not my number one call, it's my number one call because this guy gave up the information, answered all the questions. We chopped it up a little bit. Wonder why I'm doing this intro kind of different is because. The information I was getting was kind of was kind of messed up because of the audio. Audio kept going in and out, and I did not understand why, and I couldn't fix it while I was in the midst of talking. So there's going to be some spots where I'll be in mid-conversation, and then all of a sudden it's going to go into a different conversation, and you guys are going to be like, what the hell happened? So what I'm going to try and do in the midst of that is try to fill in the conversation what was asked and what was said um, with that said man with that said guys if you like videos like this and more make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell because when you when that notification pops up and it says lock out me and makes the call that's when you know that I will be making that call today all right, thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Yo, without further ado, let's get into the call. Oh, what's up, what's up? What's up? What's going on, everybody? It's time to get ready. Y'all know what time it is. It's time to get ready. It's time to get ready for another episode of Lockout Men Makes the Call for this week. What's going on, everybody? I am Lockout Man, and I am here for you to bring you the information you need about these trucking companies while you're making your decision to come into the industry. New mic, y'all. New mic. The other one was acting up a little bit, so I had to go and get me a new mic. Hope I'm coming in loud and clear and crisp. But anyway, last week's episode was a good one. I hope you guys enjoy that. Lockout Men main channel is coming back this week. Yes, yes. So everything that was on this channel right here will be moved to the main channel so you guys can enjoy it. A lot more people can get to it. And uh, I hope you guys, you know, hook a brother up, you know, when it comes back up. You know what I'm saying? Try to help this channel grow and not let youtube mess with it i guess you know what i'm saying it messed with it the last two times Ugh, ugly ugly this week's episode is eps e-p-e-s yes i had a subscriber hit me up in my email and they was like lockout men yo i really like the videos i like everything that you're doing about the videos but i really really want to know about Epps and I'm like Epps hmm I've seen a lot of their trucks down south not much in the northeast where I'm at but a lot of it is down south you want to know about Epps I'm bringing it to you 
Epps Transportation out of not sure where they're out of it let's find out where they're out of well let me tell you a little bit about Epps all right so Epps transportation is a dedicated it's dedicated to provide quality transportation service our mission is to continuously improve our service quality to meet the needs of our employees customers and suppliers Epps transportation originally the transport company began as a family business in 1931 and in 1987 Epps Carriers Inc. purchased the company and moved its headquarters from Virginia to North Carolina. Today Epps is one of the largest private trucking companies in North Carolina. You guys interested? You guys interested? They says it also says if you're a veteran with the GI Bill or educational benefits at Epps Transportation, they offer a North Carolina work apprenticeship program that will provide you with any additional monthly pay. So we about to call the recruiter and talk a little bit about Epps. Uh, the benefits, what they offer their drivers, they offer home weekly prepass, truck stop scanning, health, dental, vision, and other insurance, matching 401k, life insurance, optional disability plan, holiday and vacation pay, awards program, service apprent oh, service appreciation, roadside inspection, and safe driving, top achiever program, rider program, spousal support program, scholarship fund, credit union, and direct deposit. I believe that they are a regional company, so that's I guess that's why I don't see much of them in the Northeast. So let's go ahead and get Epps on the phone. Oh, oh, before we get to that, let's go to the let's go to the measurement safety measurement Epps transportation out of Greensboro North Carolina they have number of vehicles 1417 number of drivers 1602 it might be a little problem getting it in with Epps considering that they got more drivers than trucks Epps Transport Recruiting, can I help you? Hey, how's it going? Um, yes, you can help me. <laughs> uh, my name's Sean. <laughs> uh, my name's Sean. Uh, call recorded. Um, uh -huh. I would like to know a little bit more information about Epps. I'm from a Facebook group, and uh, we was talking about, you know, different trucking companies out here that we might be interested in, and Epps happens to be a topic of uh -huh. our conversation today. So uh, I went okay. to I went to the I went to the website, checked it out, and uh, thought I'd give you guys a call to find out a little bit more about the company. Well, let me ask you this. Let's go it out this way. Let's. Yeah, I'm gonna answer. You ask me the question. I answer the question. You, how about that? That's perfect. That's perfect. That is perfect. Go ahead. Let's, let's go. With question number one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, question number one: Are you guys uh are are you guys a sponsored training company? Like, you know, if I if I didn't have my CDLs and I was looking for a company to you know get my CDLs through, are you guys that to get your CDL? No, unfortunately, we don't do that. Um, we normally we all take trainees. However, that person have had to have attended uh, and received their CDL from one of our approved schools that's listed on our website. See, oh. Those are the schools that met the criteria that we look for when it comes to training. But as okay. far as bringing someone on to train them to get the CDL, no, we don't do that. Oh, okay, okay. What are you, what are you guys' higher areas? I can hear you now. Yes, sir. Okay. I was saying that uh, you guys look like you guys is a regional company. So what are you What are you guys' higher areas? Oh yeah, we are a, technically we are a regional company. We don't run all forty eight states. We run everything east of I thirty five in uh, Texas, okay. all the way down to. Let's just see. I'll tell you, if you was to look at a map mm -hmm. and you want to see where we run, we do like I said. You get to Dallas, you get that. It you take thirty five south all phone app that I use all the time for my phone calls and the video uh, capture software that I use to capture the calls 
unfortunately both of them is went out so when you when the next segment of this video that you're going to hear is everything coming from the actual camera and then i will cut in and and speak on what was said i uh, apologize for the <laughs> for the bad sound and everything i didn't want to call the young man back to redo the interview because you know it was a lot of good information that uh that we got and a lot of the camaraderie that we had with each other was uh was good and we couldn't i i couldn't probably repeat that so let's go ahead and continue with the video all right guys so right here uh this is where the audio started acting up and it completely went out for a good chunk of the call uh, in the midst of this uh, question right here, he was telling me about uh, he was telling me about the region and the, where they run. So they run pretty much the south region, and they do have a northeast region. Uh, they run pretty much everything south of I-35. They run all the way through Texas, all the way over to Florida. Uh, so for you Florida guys, if you want to know if they hire out of Florida, yes, they do. Um, I asked him, did they hire out of Ohio? He said that, mm, yay and nay, they, they needed to get me a route to get me back home. So that would be a problem with, uh, with getting me, uh, back and forth to Ohio. Um, uh, again, I am so sorry about this call. Unfortunately, like I said, my audio went out for a good chunk of the call. So basically what I'm doing is pretty much ad-libbing what he said after I asked the question. Okay. So if any, if anybody like myself, which is out of Ohio with, uh, four years of experience, by the way, um, would I would I be uh, would I be able to come on board with you guys if I'm if I'm out of Ohio to run with you? As I said uh, when I asked that question, unfortunately, pretty much no, because he wasn't. They would not be able to get me any freight that would take me back up to Ohio. Well, being that you guys is South Base, is there only one terminal, or how many terminals you guys have? Uh, they got six throughout the south state so they um they got six terminals and with the main one being in greensboro uh north carolina they also have several drop lots and with that said their dropping hook percentage is about 80 to 85 percent uh for pre-employment drug testing do you guys require hair follicles or is it urine or both of course, it is not hair follicles, so you guys don't have to worry about that. It is straight urine. Also, so let me ask you this, doing pre-employment. Uh, do you guys offer to let us get all of our drug testing and permits done before, well, drug testing? Would you guys uh, allow us to get our drug testing done before we get there to our orientation? I have read somewhere that uh, some companies are letting you do your your drug testing now before you get to the orientation. That'll cut out any matter of fact that if you get to an orientation and boom, all of a sudden you fail the drug test. Now you got to pack up, go all the way back home and just be a waste now what they do and they will pay for it EPS will pay for your drug testing before you come to orientation i got i i got uh i i got kicked out of i got kicked out of orientation because i flunked my drug test well brother man you already knew that you was gonna go in for orientation a job orientation at that and you already knew that they was going to do a drug test. So why risk smoking? Hit that, hit that beat right quick. Smoke weed every day. And why Smoke risk drinking? Smoke and you know you're going day. in for a drug test. I, 
I don't understand you guys, man. Y'all, this is serious. This is like, this is one of the jobs that you really can't smoke every day. Smoke you got to be focused day. on here. So, EPS will take care of that for you. They will pay for your drug testing. And you can, before you go into orientation. Okay, perfect. That's what's up. That is what's up. Uh, what about... Uh, what about some type of agility test? Do you guys do that? I mean, you know, some companies want you to duck, walk up under a trailer and all that other stuff. Bam! No agility tests. No nothing. This as long as you can get into the truck and into the trailer, they don't care. What about, uh, what about felon? Felons. Are you guys felon friendly? Actually, the orientation, if you fill out the orientation and everything, it's only one day. It's only one day. You pretty much, once you get down to Epps, you pretty much get your keys the same day you get down there. What about uh, what about for your DOT medical card? Can we use our current card if we have one, or do we got to get another one? Nope. You don't have to worry about your DOT card. Once you already have it, you have it. Uh, once you get it, once you get in, and if you still, you got enough time on there, you don't have to worry about it, uh, getting another DOT card. What about, uh, what about felon? felons are you guys felon friendly yep felon friendly well it's on a case by case basis i wouldn't exactly say that they are a felon friendly company i will say that they will take you on a case by case basis so well, just make sure that you know but I would what, say what happened to you basis. in the past just make sure it's not as serious that they won't bring you on. Quite a few factors we take in consideration, but I would say it's a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, okay. What about... Oh, what's the... Uh, you guys have a sign-on bonus, and if so, how much is it? No, we do not do sign-on bonuses, sir. Um, oh, okay. We, we, don't, we don't have the need oh. to do that. Uh, we, uh, and, you know, it's been my experience that a lot of times when you see those things, it's, that most of your companies having a difficult time keeping people in a position. Yeah, keep retention. So <clears throat> they have to have these high end bonuses, so that way that that automatically generates some type of contractual work because we don't have contracts. Okay. You know, so okay. What about we um, don't do we don't do high end bonuses? Okay, that's cool. That's cool. What about um? All right. So the orientation. When I come down for orientation, uh, now being that you guys is a South company. Uh, Let's just say I just happened to move down there and I come on board to go to orientation. How would you get me there? Uh, by any means necessary. Plane, train, automobile, bus, rollerblade, skateboard, whatever you need to. Oh, that's what's up. Uh, we take care of all your transportation. We, we take care of your transportation needs. Now, depending on where you're coming from and what, you, what position you're coming for, mm -hmm. uh, let's just say a person is coming in for a position that's local, correct? Right. So. Then that, that means we're not going to be getting the truck here. The truck will be at a local location, the local spot that they'll be working out of. Then what we do, we give them the option to if they have the if they can drive themselves here and back, we normally compensate them for their miles or the fuel, whichever they want. Or, or if they don't have the transportation, we get them here one way or the other. Okay. Uh, the hotel accommodations, they, we take care of hotel, we take care of your meals, uh, and you get your in the hotel, you get your own room, you don't share room with anybody. Gotcha. You get your own room and your own accommodation. <laughs> All right. Do we get paid for orientation? Yes, we do. Uh, uh, yes, you do. Uh, normally, our orientation is one day, and there's another. It's normally one hundred twenty-five dollars for the one day. But if you complete all your pre-orientation stuff prior to coming here, we turn around and pay another hundred dollars for doing that. That's like getting your drug test done, all your online videos completed, all your form signs, the things that you do, the things that you have done while you were here. If you do it before you get here. Because we give you the option to do that, then we pay additional hundred twenty five dollars, so that makes it two twenty five. Okay, okay. Now let me ask you this: uh, You did mention something about uh, the approved schools and everything. So when the guys come out of uh, mm -hmm. trucking schools to come work for you guys, uh, what's the mm -hmm. what's what's the what's the amount of time they got to wait for a trainer? Uh, they don't have to. Here's what happens. Um, if a person applies to come into a training program who have attended one of our schools, mm -hmm. as long as I call that driver and that driver qualifies, well, then my next step is to find him a trainer. Once I find that trainer for that person, then we, I will invite them, uh, do the orientation inv invite as far as telling me what day they want to attend orientation. Once we get all that stuff, 
way. Once it once ten orientation, the wait time is normally the very next week they're gonna start with the training, depending on what day they attend orientation. Okay, so we have orientation every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So if they attend orientation on Monday or Tuesday, nine or ten times their trainer will be already out on the road. So we normally wait till they come in off for their refit and get ready to head back out to start. So it's no more than a week for a train once they have, once they have attended and complete orientation. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. How 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 many years or how how long uh, of of the quite uh, the qualification of a trainer has with you guys? Like how long they've been training to be a trainer, or not to be a trainer? Uh, to but to how be long? a trainer. Well, yeah, both both to be a trainer uh, and how long they've been training. Okay, a, a person you just can't come to work here and been work for 60 days and want to be a trainer we don't do that you have to man you have to be here for a little while you know at, at a minimum a year oh, okay. and they don't they, cool. they, they, they just we just don't look at your driving we look at your work history we look at your safety record uh we look at your ability to be able to train someone not ever not because you're a good driver doesn't mean you can train somebody oh, okay. you have to have the the worth all the ability to be a trainer and okay. once you make to our train to train the class and we and we bless off on you then okay then you can be a trainer but we just don't make anybody a trainer all right so uh being that you guys is down south so y'all y'all don't do no uh no california no new york so there's no force dispatch there well we don't force dispatch to new york city no we don't go to california if you, you do have drivers who will occasionally take a load to new york city we don't force dispatch you there okay. to go there uh but go to Canada but we, we just our lanes of travel normally is where I just told you those different right. states that we run awesome. so those are the boundaries yeah all right so cent per mile man what what would what I be starting at out the gate it depends on what account you want that's for a person who's running the northeast they with the loans you have one year because we require a minimum of one year of over the road experience within the last three mm -hmm. or two in the last five if a person's running just the northeast they have 57 cents a mile because up the, 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 the traffic, the okay. <laughs> congestion. A lot of people, yeah, a lot of people, and, then, and those guys they come down as far as uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, go back up, uh, and then everybody else starts at forty-three cents a mile or forty-two cents a mile. All right, so that's forty-three or forty, uh, forty-three or forty-two. That's that's out the gate. That's not with incentives or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, the, the, I enjoy the incentives we get is what you call. We have a utilization bonus at the end of the month. Uh, you average uh, 2,400 miles a week. That's 9,600 miles a month. Every all after once you hit, once you hit 9,600 miles, we pay additional two cents on all your miles that you drive that month. Oh, okay. So even if you did 3,000 miles a, a week, you know you will get paid another two cents at the end of the month for all your miles. Okay. Is it uh, is the is the pay based on straight miles or is it a sliding scale? There's no sliding scale. Straight miles. Right. Empty or loaded, your pay is the same. All right. So, hey, man, I'm I'm gonna if I come in and work for you guys, of course I might be broke on that first week, but that two twenty five will work. Do you guys uh do you guys have pay advances? Ah, uh, they gotta pay every if you got a penny every year. Okay. No, 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 pay no pay advances like every oh, week. advance on your pay. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, your pay advance. Uh, right. you got an EFS card now. If you need advance and pay your. Or any type of pay advance go through your driver manager to authorize it for you. Okay, and that and you guys and you just mentioned we get EFS cards, so you guys don't do com data. No, we used to have com data, then we know EFS. Oh, okay. Uh, speaking of okay, so speaking of which, what what type of uh, internal computer inside the cab you guys run off of? People net or Qualcomm, Qualcomm system? Oh, Qualcomm. Okay. Qualcomm. All right. Perdium is it offered and is it mandatory? It's, it's, it's offered during the orientation. You do a, you will take watch a video, and it's optional for you. It's not mandatory for us. All right. So I'm looking at I'm looking at the website, man, and it look like you guys offer holiday and vacation pay. What uh, what's the holidays that you guys offer, and how much you pay? Okay, I knew you was gonna ask me that. <laughs> I, I knew you was gonna ask me. That. Give me one second, because I don't like to tell people stuff off the cuff and not. Right information. I uh, appreciate that. holidays we do? Um, let's see. Where's it? Where'd it go? Well, I want to read it right off. Right off the bat. Holidays. Come on, I can't even see. My eyes are just blurry. 
Uh, we do New Year's, uh, Thanksgiving, Labor Day, 4th of July, Easter, Good Friday, Memorial, Christmas. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, is that is that a set amount on that, or is it just, what, like $25, $50? dollars holiday pay. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, vacation pay, when do it start? Uh, the vacation, your vacation starts basically, um, let's see, I mean, all the full-time drivers, blah, 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 so you got one, you got a week after the first year, mm -hmm. uh, you got two weeks after two years, and three weeks after ten years. Okay, okay. Alright, awesome. What about a breakdown pay, detention pay? What will what, what, what we get on that? Okay, your breakdown pay is as follows. It's going to be, let's do detention. You take $15 per hour after the first two hours from your apartment, uh, max of eight hours in a 24-hour period. Uh, let's see, and all that's done to, all you got to do is complete a macro 20th message in the Qualcomm uh, to be able to get that. Uh, and you, let me see, what's your, what's what you said, detention? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the breakdown pay, yeah. And now the breakdown pay is fifteen dollars after the f after four hours of waiting, of waiting period. Oh. And I can say eight hours and eight hour will pay each twenty four hour pay period. Okay. Um, now let me get you the and then uh, yeah, the detention is the same fifteen after two hours. Okay. How often layovers there happen? And do we, we don't have a lot of layovers, man. I'm not to be honest with you. We really don't. But we give you a maximum of uh, sixty dollars after the first twenty four hours. Okay. When it's re you know when, <clears throat> and if it's um if it's a weekend layover, it's gonna be seventy five dollars. All right. So as far as benefit goes, I see you guys offer a lot: health, dental, vision, uh, free on site clinic, matching four hundred one k, life insurance, and optional disability plan. That's uh, that's that's uh, that's that's pretty good. As far as the health and dental and vision, how much how much a week I gotta pay for that? Uh, it depends. Are you a smoker or a non-smoker, and are you going to be just insuring yourself? Uh, non-smoker, your non-smoker, insuring myself. Okay, for a matter for the basic plan of a non-smoker, you look at twenty-five dollars a week. Okay. Um, vision, the vision employee, basically the basic vision plan is uh, free to you. It okay. doesn't cost you anything. Uh, the dental is like fifth is like fifteen dollars and fourteen cents. Okay. What about uh? All right, so are you? Are you, do you guys require hazmat? No, sir. No, we do not. We require hazmat to work here. All right, so let's say if I don't have my hazmat and I go get it while I'm working there, will you guys reimburse me for it? Providing you're working on an account that requires you to have a hazmat account. If you if you put you an account that requires you to have a hazmat, mm -hmm. and you get it, we will reimburse you for getting the hazmat. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. How many uh how many miles a week I can average there? Uh, it's, it depends on you and depends on what account you want. If you run the system, you can average anywhere between twenty six, twenty eight, three thousand miles a week if you want to. You know, if in, in and all that comes down to are you going to take a thirty four hour reset or are you going to take a forty eight hour? Are you going to take two days off? You know, okay. the club, like you know as you know as well as I do. <laughs> the longer you keep the door closed, the more miles you run. For and sure. In order to do that, you have to have the freight. Yeah, you got to keep running. For sure. For you, sure. you can. I'll, I'll tell every driver. You control your destiny here. It doesn't matter what account you own. If you want to run, we, you, you, we'll let you run. You know, even with a, even with getting you home every week, we let you run. Now you want to. If if miles is is your motivating factor, then you might want to consider. Do I want to come home every seven days? Or I want to come every ten days. How do I want to run? It's up to you. Okay, that is what's up. I like that already, man. I like that. Well, you already uh, told me uh, the lanes that you guys uh, that you guys run. You know, southeast, northeast, and all that good stuff. Uh, what divisions do you guys have? Do you guys have the other than drive-in? That's it. We are just a drive-in company. Okay, uh, okay. drive-in straight. Okay. Uh, you guys have you guys have any type of idle policy there we can can we run the trucks in the winter time if it's hot i mean cold and if it's high in, 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 in the winter time it's not an issue because we have a bunk heaters that runs the heating system uh okay. and the some we do not really have an idle policy we just ask that you be mindful of idling that means 
if you don't have to idle a truck, don't idle. But if okay. you need to idle, especially in the summertime, idle a truck. It's just that you got to, you know, in moderation, just don't leave your truck out of flying jet idling while you take a shower. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Do you take guys... a shower, shut it off, come back, and if you got to, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I'm just saying, if you, you take your shower, you come back, then get back in the truck and turn the truck on, let it run if you need to. Tenfold. Just be mindful. That's all we ask. All right. Do you guys reimburse for, now let me ask you this now, reimburse for scales, tolls, and parking? Uh, tolls, scales, and tolls. We have park, we have, we, we take care of your toll. We take best pass. We have a best pass we do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. that helps you on the roads to take care of your tolls and all your scales. If you ever have to pay for anything out your pocket, you will be reimbursed by your driver manager. As oh. long as it's a valid, as long as it's a valid purchase by you or valid, uh, something, whatever the, the reason for you to spend money for, to do something for us and it's valid, your driver manager will reimburse you. But oh. normally our drivers don't come out of their pocket for anything. Oh, okay, that's what's up. That's now, what's parking, up. parking is basically... Parking is going to be basically on you because on your home time, you take that truck and trailer home if you don't live close to a terminal or a yard. You know, a lot of drivers park different places, and they, they, they park at their own expense. All right. Now, but what about parking at a, at a truck stop that has those, those, those reserved parking that, that's pretty much covered by us as well? Yeah, if you want you because you choose to park in a reserved spot. So <laughs> oh, okay. that is, that's a choice because in that... You, the, the truck stuff has other thing, other parking spots than reserved. You know, it just those first come first serve spots. I got you. I got you. All right. Now you mentioned uh, you mentioned home time, and you did mention the fact that we can take our trucks home. So that's a that's a pretty good thing. Uh, as far as and we already talked a little bit about home time, so we can pretty much get home anytime we want to get home, right? Yeah, you do your 70. Once you put your 70 in, you refresh your home, your reset. The yeah, driver manager will get you home for your reset. Okay, okay. What's the maximum amount of days I can take off, though? Uh, once again, that's going to be that's a conversation you and the driver manager have to have. Okay. Uh, I have drivers who are home for two days. I've had drivers home for three days because of maybe they have an appointment they have to do. Right. Now, and, 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 and I cannot talk for a driver manager because this is recruiting. Right. Uh, there's two different entities. That's, right. that's operations. And now, that's, have, I, pre I appreciate you saying that, too. I, pre I appreciate yeah, you saying man, that. If, oh, go if ahead. A driver have a good working relationship with his, if a driver has a good working relationship with his driver manager, they will have discussed that way ahead of time. Say, hey, I've got this coming up on this particular day. I probably going to need an extra day. So having said that, uh, to me, a good driver, knowing he has an extra day he needs to take, out of driving the week prior to that, uh, I would try to run as hard as I can to make up for that shit that I'd be taking off. Okay. See, that's what's up. That's a good thing that you mentioned that, that the recruiting department is definitely separate from, from the, uh, from the uh, fleet managers. Because we, yeah, we could get one yep. information from one guy and then get on thinking that information is valid and then boom. We get uh, information from the fleet manager that's totally way off the mark. <laughs> so yeah, it's a good thing that you said that. that yeah, but one, one of the one of the good thing we one of the good things that we do here a part, of, a part of our orientation process we call our onboarding. Once the driver has made it through orientation, he meets with operations with his onboarding crew, a driver development team, and they take him through the system, having to introduce everybody and ask question, answer question at that time as to what they can and can't do, the do's and the don'ts, and all that stuff. But uh, and, and everything everything comes down to communication. It's in full. And not just regular communication, effective communication, where the driver on the, uh, the driver manager understand what the driver is saying, and the driver on the understand what the driver manager is saying. It's in you know, there's no, there's no, because you know, there is a, there's a lot of misconstruedness can happen when you have gray areas. So if everything is black and white, you can't go wrong with black and white. There's no misunderstanding when it's black and white. Yes or no. There's no misunderstanding. Exactly, exactly. What's the uh, pet and rider policy? I see the uh, rider policy on uh, the website. Currently, currently, we do not have a pet policy, but we do have a rider policy. Uh, the rider have to be over the age of 13. Uh, they cannot assist in any operations of that vehicle. Uh, if that rider happens to become, if she, the rider is a female and she happens to become pregnant, she has to come off that truck. And if you do have a rider, 
uh, you incur a $21.80 insurance premium for that whole month. So basically, for twenty one eighty, your riders can ride for the whole month. Okay. Okay. Now let me ask you this: What if uh, what if my rider is above eighteen, and what if he or she has their over the age of thirteen? Or over the age of thirteen, but I'm going I'm going eighteen because this this going to be their question on that. What if they have they uh they uh CDLs? Is it still okay for them to ride with me? They can ride. They cannot drive. They cannot operate a truck at all, though. They okay. can't touch anything on that truck. Okay, cool, cool. They just cool. got to sit in that passenger seat, and that's it. They are a rider. It's not a team. Cool, <laughs> because I, you know, some some companies don't mind them being a rider, but they have an issue if they have the CDLs. So some companies like yeah, they, you, know, you can, they and, you know, they put because your person is a rider. That you know, like I said, however, you know. Just, just say they just cannot help. They cannot help you in any operation of that vehicle. All right. If I just if, if I come on and let's say the let's say the honeymoon ain't all that hot to me, and I decide to uh, I decide to leave. What's the policy for me to turn in the truck? Uh, uh to turn in the way you get it. Uh, no, there's no abandonment of any loads. Just let the driver manager know. Hey, I'm not. I am not happy with the the operation policy. Whatever reason you're leaving. Let them know. Give us due notice. And if you, I always tell people the best way to do is to work a notice and leave it. Let it go. You know, you leave on good terms, especially if you're a good driver. That what you're doing in a sense is basically giving yourself an opportunity to come back if things doesn't work out. All right, cool. You know, that's what I say. Just bring the truck to where you got it. Clean. Turn all the keys and all this, everything, all the equipment in to your terminal, and then hey, part on good terms. All right, and cool. That's how you do. Awesome. Hey, in my world, that's what a professional driver do. That's what a professional driver is supposed to do. <laughs> what about yeah, uh? What about the equipment? What about the equipment? What what equipment do you guys offer? Uh, the majority of our power units in our company are Freightliners. Uh, they have the age of between between uh, three and a half to four years old. Uh, all our trucks are on warranty. To be honest with you, so uh, having said that, maintenance is crucial for us. Uh, you're going to have to maintain all your services that on a, t- on a timely basis, so that mm-hmm. because they're staying. To understand the warranty, but it's freight liners. We got a couple of Volvos here and there, and some couple other trucks. But the majority of freight is our freight liner Cascadia double bunk sleepers. Okay. What well, are they? Uh, manuals, ten speeds, automatics. Automatics. Yeah, automatics. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, for driver comfort, man, what, what what do I get inside of the truck? Uh, you get a, a stand wheel, two seats, and a double bunk. Double bunk. Damn it, man. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> That's what you get. What's in the car? Seats in a steering wheel. Here's the thing. Our, our trucks, our trucks, the, the <laughs> fact that you come home every single week. <laughs> you ask, no telling. You come home every week, right? So it's not like you are three, four weeks at a time, so you don't need to have all the creature comforts at home now. We do have drivers who have their own refrigerators in there. Mm-hmm. They have the microwaves in there. And uh, we, uh, because we do not have APUs, we allow you inverters up to 1,500 watts in your truck. So okay. you purchase the inverters, we install it for you for free, and whatever you can run at 1,500 watts, that's what you can put in there. Because once again, that is your truck. But we're not going to, we, we don't, our trucks don't have all the bells and whistles because if I give you a truck that's furnished with all the bells and whistles, I don't want to see you for at least a month. I got you. I got you. My man says seats in the steering wheel. <laughs> I like that. The, and don't uh, forget a du- don't forget a double bunk. And a double bunk. <laughs> Smoke weed every day. Does with, the um, with fresh Smoke new mattresses. Smoke weed every day. Smoke weed every day. Smoke weed oh, every day. Hell yeah, that is good. That is good. D- does it come with a driver camera though? Uh, the cameras do have the ca- this most a lot of us uh, a lot of our newer trucks have cameras. However, they only face the road. There's no audio, just video. Oh, okay, oh, okay, so that's cool. They're not facing the driver. They're facing the road. Yeah, and All it right. comes on only only in the event of a uh, any um, uh, a serious event. It comes on. All right, two part question coming up. Do you guys offer lease? Ah, yes, we do. However, right now this pur- the lease purchase program because it's been so good to us, we have to have put we had to put a hold on that program to include our own operator program. Oh. Um, what's it's the? Very, it's been very successful for us. What's the trucks governing that? Sixty-five on the cruise. All right. What about for a lease driver? 
uh, if you lease in our trucks, and it more likely it's going to come out, it probably it's going to be, it's probably going to be the same. I think it's going to be the same thing. Oh, okay. If I'm not mistaken. No. Nah. Because it's through the, the the trucking company that leases our trucks that people get a lease program through normally is about 65, 65. Because once again, remember you you run around with that Epps logo on your truck. Right. What's you the know, it's lease? It still have that Epps. What's the what's the leasing company y'all lease through? I mean, what's what's is, is, uh, is it Select is Trust it? of Greensboro? Oh, so so I've seen most of the people who come into our company to try to get into a lease program. Uh, normally, first of all, they have to qualify as a company driver. Once they come, once they qualify as a company driver, come to orientation, make it to orientation, then we send them over to Select Trust of Greensboro to pick out their truck. We very seldom really have a problem with anybody getting a truck from them. Okay, they that really don't. Sad. I'm sure they have some level of credit that they pull, but uh, for the most part, if we if a person is qualified to drive for us, then uh, Select Trust of Greens will normally put them to put them in a truck. That is what's up, Select Trust of Greens, girl. All right, all right. Well, man, hey, look, man, thank you very much, man. I mean, this has been an awesome conversation, one of the best that I had yeah. in, a, in a in a hot minute, man. You know your stuff, man. How long you been with the yeah. company? Five years. Uh, yeah, you definitely know your stuff, man. Hey, what, what's the uh, policy on uh, on cell phones there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's I've always this, this is a tricky subject because you know you can't have, use your handheld device while you're driving, correct? Exactly. We all exactly. know that. Uh, and and there, there if, when you come to orientation, there is a policy that we have to that you make you read mm -hmm. that every every driver have to sign. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I don't know what it's word for word, but they'll tell you what you do and you don't say, oh, when it comes to cell phone. Uh -huh. That's all I can say. It's, it, 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 because every, that's part of orientation. You, you will go to that video and you'll read that policy on um, what you call it, um, <clears throat> handheld device. Exactly. You can't. And exactly. I see everybody run, Everybody runs around here with these headsets on anyway, as it is. Right, so, right. And, you know, and you and know what the DOT law says about driving and using a handheld device. Mm -hmm. So. And companies like like and Snyder. Oh, go ahead. I'm go sorry. Ahead. Mm -hmm. I was about That's to say. It. I can say we try to. One thing we do. We we are very. We very. We we try to make sure we maintain the rules. You know, at all time, and we tell our drivers, you know, do what you know is right. You know, if you know it's not right, don't do it. Even when no one is looking, you know that part. That's part of your character. If no one's looking, you know it's wrong. Don't do it. But you know, if people say out of sight, out of mind, you know how that go. Exactly. Exactly. All right, man. Well, hey, what's your name again? Mm -hmm. My name is Edison. E D D I S O N. All right. Hey, Edison. Uh, do you have any uh, information that you can send to me? I got uh, I got an email that uh, I can give you, and you can uh, send it to me, and I can I can definitely forward this information to uh, to the people that might be interested. I will tell you what I can do. I can send you a copy of a company benefits. And that way, and maybe I shoot. I probably do a highlight of the uh, lease purchase program and send it to you as well. All right. All right, that'll work. Are right, you ready for the email? What's the? All yes, right. I am, sir. L O C. But I'll do. I'll send some information that we talked about as far as the company benefits. I'll also send a, some information on our lease purchase program as well. All right. Exactly. Exactly. And I can forward this information to anybody that might be interested in coming on with uh, Epps, man. Well, thank you very much for well, the I time, man. It. I really do appreciate it. I, I appreciate hey. you, man. Hey, not a problem, sir. Anytime, man. You take it and have a good day. Hey, you too. You have a blessed one. All right. Thank you so much.